America's premier party destination is throwing itself a birthday bash, and everyone's invited. 2005 marks the 100-year anniversary of the dazzling city of Las Vegas. And Travel Channel's gonna help you celebrate by taking you on a VIP tour. Not only will we show you the sights, we'll fill you in on all you need to know to hit the ground running. We'll give you all the answers to your most frequently asked questions. From luxurious resorts to gourmet restaurants. We'll also give you the scoop on the bargain buffets and hotels that won't break the bank. From the do's and don'ts of gambling etiquette to the definitely's of the nightclub scene. Our experts will help you cut your losses with info on comps and freebies and give you insider tips for hitting the jackpot. So sit back while we tell you everything you ever wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask in Las Vegas, all the answers. There is so much to see and do in the electric city that the first question for newcomers is, where to start? And everyone who's been there once will answer, the Strip, of course. Next question. What is the Strip, and how do I get there? The Strip is the four-mile stretch of hotels and casinos along Las Vegas Boulevard. In the 1940s, this stretch of road was called the Los Angeles Highway. Casino owner and former Los Angeles police captain, Guy McAfee, thought the Flamingo Hotel was reminiscent of the clubs along Sunset Strip between Beverly Hills and Hollywood. He took to calling Las Vegas Boulevard the Strip, and eventually the nickname stuck. Today on the Strip, you'll find the most elaborate mega resorts in town, fit for the most discerning high roller. Which brings us to the next question. If you're taking a taxi, we suggest you not take the tunnel. When you go through the airport tunnel, that's the long way around. It will take you longer, and it'll cost you $10, $15 more to get to the Strip. No matter what, you can get there just as fast and just as efficiently going down Paradise Road the other way, the way you're supposed to go. So just how much should you expect to pay? Well, that depends on exactly where you want to go. At the MGM Grand and Tropicana, which is the very south end, the closest, you're looking at about eight, about nine dollars. Then mid-strip, farther north, you're looking at about 12, 13 dollars. And then north end of the strip, if you go right down Paradise, It'll cost you probably $14, $15. Now that you know how to get to the Strip, the next question is where to stay. You've got your pickings. There are ultra-luxurious mega resorts, themed hotels, and bargain or moderately priced hotels. You want the five-star treatment? The Bellagio is well known not only for its mega-sized plush suites and dancing fountains, but also for the beautiful 2,000 glass-blown flowers that hang from the lobby ceiling. The ever-changing thematic flower displays in the hotel's conservatory and botanical gardens are one of the resort's claim to fame. The Bellagio is also the most costly construction on the Strip to date. Just how costly? Six billion with an additional $300 million for art in the gallery, so 1.9 billion. Um, and that would have been the, the most expensive built thus far. Another five-star luxurious mega-resort is the Venetian. It sets the standard in opulence and class with its Italian-style decor, inside and out. The graceful arched bridges and stone walkways capture the spirit of the world's most romantic city. One of the most memorable experiences guests will leave with is the beautiful Grand Canal. Where else outside the real Venice can you be shuttled through 500,000 square feet of impeccable shopping in your very own gondola. Speaking of great shopping, coupled with exciting entertainment, fabulous restaurants, and elaborate spas, these amazing amenities and much more are what defines a true mega resort. Do you know which hotel on the Strip was the first to earn this title? The first mega resort in Las Vegas, according to a lot of people, was the Mirage, which opened in the late 80s, was built by Steve Wynn, and it was the first major strip hotel to be built in over a decade. You could also make a very good case that the first mega resort was Caesar's Palace, which opened in 65, and was the first really themed strip hotel with all of the bells and whistles from ancient Rome. 
The themed hotels are in fact one of the biggest attractions to visitors of Las Vegas, often exceeding their wildest expectations. Caesar's Palace was probably one of the first of its kind to hit the Strip. This imperial hotel recaptures the glory that was Greece and the grandeur that was Rome. Guests marvel at the four-acre Garden of the Gods. The imported marble statues and immaculate landscaping is reminiscent of the ancient Roman public baths. Caesar's offers amenities fit for an emperor and prides itself on providing impeccable service to their guests from the moment they arrive. Caesar's Entertainment has placed a check-in desk right there at the airport. Everyone gets caught up in the excitement of being in Las Vegas and we're making it even easier. All you need to do is go to our desk there and you can check into any one of our four resorts. They'll give you your key. You'll come right to the hotel and be able to check right into your room. From Rome to Egypt, Las Vegas can transport you wherever you want to go, no matter what country. Want to live like Egyptian kings and queens? A gigantic sphinx will welcome you to the 30-story pyramid-shaped Luxor. Named after a city in Upper Egypt, the resort boasts a 29 million cubic foot atrium, which leads to a full-scale reproduction of King Tut's tomb. One of the resort's most unique features is the beam of light that shines from the top of the pyramid. It's so powerful, it can be seen from outer space. Another themed resort that is especially popular with families is the Excalibur. Guests are immersed in the full medieval experience. This Camelot-inspired property, complete with tall towers, a moat, and a fire-breathing dragon, offers rooms and entertainment in a moderate price range. Which brings us to our next question. Where can I find the cheap hotels? The great bargains in town, without a doubt, are mostly at the older places that are trying to compete. They can't compete with the, the volcanoes and the dancing fountains. They do it with food, they do it with low prices. So let's head downtown to check out what some of your options are. First stop, Binion's Horseshoe. This Vegas staple has been part of the downtown scene dating back to the 1950s. And it's still very popular with visitors today. The hotel's namesake is responsible for quite a few firsts in Sin City. Probably the most widely known is the World Series of Poker, the biggest poker tournament in the world. This event started in 1970 with a group of people that Biddy Bidion put together, old-time friends, old-time gamblers, that he wanted to put on a contest, mostly as a gathering among friends just to come on out and gamble at the Horseshoe. They decided, let's use the name for the World Series of Poker, and it caught on, and it's worked ever since. Can you guess what big casino trend Benny Binion gets credit for starting? Binion's Horseshoe was the first casino to offer free drinks to the gamblers. And this policy was started in 1951 by Benny Binion himself. Now all the other casinos offer free drinks to their gamblers also. Benny Binion not only offered free drinks to slot players, but he was the first owner to put carpet in a downtown casino and the first to have limousines pick up customers at the airport. Binion said, if you want to get rich, make little people feel like big people. What better way to make people feel grand than surrounding them with gold? The Golden Nugget is another bargain hotel and casino. One of the most famous hotels off the Strip, its bright golden lights are part of the famous Fremont Street experience, which we'll show you more of a little later in the show. This golden icon is also home to the world's largest single golden nugget and is free for all to see. So the bottom line is, staying off the Strip still guarantees a unique Vegas hotel experience. Best of all, because these hotels are off the beaten path, you get a little more bang for your buck. When we come back, we'll answer some of your most frequently asked questions about how to hit that big win and give you some tips on when and how to share the wealth. We're back in Glitter City, answering all your questions about Las Vegas. What to do, where to stay, and how to play. You've settled into the perfect hotel, maybe already had a margarita by the pool, 
And by now, you're feeling that magnetic pull that grabs just about every visitor, the casino. Now it's time to show you the money. So ready, set, hang on there, high roller. Before getting caught up in the excitement of it all, a few Vegas answers can help you hang on to your cash, double your fun, and even up your chances of winning that mega jackpot. Bringing us to our next question. How can I win? If you're walking into the casino, trying to find a game that you are guaranteed to win at, you might as well turn around and walk out, because in the long term, there are no games that you are going to consistently beat. As you come into a casino, you should expect to lose. These things aren't built like castles or, you know, huge pyramids uh, from losing. The casinos do win, and they do win over time, and they win regularly. How's that for a reality check? The truth is, every game is slanted slightly in favor of the casino. It's called the house advantage, and it's how casinos stay in business. For example, Kino, where clearly you can win a lot of money on Kino if you bet multiple spot tickets. There's a very high house advantage, approximately 27%. Uh, big six wheel, where you can bet on the Joker for 40 to one odds. There's a very, very high house advantage, approximately 17%. Most gambling novices often want to know what exactly do the odds mean. To answer this question, we'll turn to the roulette wheel, a popular casino game where players bet on which numbered slot of a rotating wheel the ball will drop. The key principle to always remember when playing this game, or any other for that matter, is that the higher the risk, the bigger the payoff. For example, placing a bet on red or black is considered low risk because there's a higher chance that you'll win. To use gambling lingo, the payout on this bet is even odds, or one to one. For a higher risk, bet a four number split, which means placing your chip in between four numbers. Your payout odds are now eight to one because you've selected specific numbers. And of course, if you bet on a single number that actually hits, your payout will be 35 times the amount you bet. Got it? Good. Now you're ready for some table action. For the first time player, stepping up to a blackjack or roulette table can be intimidating. But if you know the proper etiquette and some basic strategy, you've already got a leg up on the competition. The first rule is smile. You're on camera all the time. The eye in the sky, as it's called, is a necessary feature in every casino. It keeps track of money flow and helps catch cheaters on either side of the table. Knowing you're on camera adds a certain formality to the money-changing transactions. In all table games in a casino, when a player wants to enter the game, they lay their money on the table. They should not try to hand it directly to the dealer. All transactions must take place in full view of the camera, and by laying the money on the table, this ensures the camera has clear view, and there's no allusion to impropriety of anything passing money or cards passing between the dealer and the player. The same goes for putting your purse, books, or other personal items on the table, since they get in the way of the camera's view. And don't even think about bringing calculators or other helpful little devices along. Other than your chips and your drink, most tables allow you to have a basic strategy card. When it comes to blackjack basics, a strategy card can help you avoid making any costly goofs. In games of chance, like craps or roulette, knowing how to bet is key. Stick to the simple bets until you learn the game. And don't hesitate to ask questions. It's perfectly acceptable. Yeah, if you walk up and say, hey, I've never played blackjack before, you know, can you explain it to me, show it to me, you know? Oh, yeah, we would definitely explain to you. That's what our job is. Brushing up on your tipping etiquette around the gaming tables is important, too. In Vegas, a tip is called a toke, short for token. And a tipper is called a george, as in the face on the dollar bill. So what's the rule on tipping the dealers? If a player comes up and asks us, how can we tip for the dealers? Then we just tell them, you know, where to put it down on the table. Or, you know, we don't solicit any type of tips at all. Well, if the customer is on a winning streak, the dealers like the customers to token them like every hand, 10%, 15%, you know. It's really enjoyable. It's a lot of fun when they're winning. We're winning also. But what if the player is down on their luck? 
players losing, we don't expect them to tip us, you know, especially if they're losing a lot of money. Usually players, when they come in and they're tourists and they're on a vacation, it doesn't matter to them whether they're winning or losing. They're just having a good time, so they'll tip you regardless. So remember, always leave a toke as a thank you when you leave the table. For just a few bucks, you'll add a lot of class to your game and maybe even some good karma. But one bit of strategy that everyone can use, forget about looking for patterns or following hunches. Take slot machines. A random number generator in a computer chip controls whether you win or not. You have just as good a chance of beating a machine that paid out five minutes ago as you have of beating one that hasn't paid out all day. So relax and forget the superstitions. Now, we hope you took notes because it's easy to see what's most popular, both with players and with the casino. They're fun and easy to play. No rules to master, no chance of making a mistake. They're a great way to get the feel of things. And Sin City's got over 197,000 of them. Every machine has a payout chart right on the front. It tells you what you can win for each credit you bet. If you pay close attention, there are also other ways to tell how much you can win on a slot machine. Leading us to our next question. I always see these blinking lights on top of the slot machine. What do those mean? On top of each slot machine is a small light fixture called a candle. It assists players by allowing them to call for change or service. But each candle also has a second light with a color, which indicates the machine's denomination. Red is for the nickel machines. Yellow is for the quarters, gold is for the half dollars, blue for the dollars, and purple for five dollars. But these candles also serve to assist the slot attendants. When the, the lights blink together, that means that they, they've actually hit a jackpot and, and somebody's going to come over to attend to them to pay the jackpot. Keep in mind, small jackpots pay out more frequently. But experts say you're better off taking the long shot and playing for the big win. Always play the maximum number of credits a machine will allow. Betting this way qualifies you for an extra bonus. I think it would be much more beneficial for the customer to play a machine where he could put the max amount of coins in the machine than playing a higher limit machine or a higher denomination machine where they're only gonna put one coin or two coins instead of the max coins. Hey, here's a question. Why are there so many of these one-armed bandits? About 25 years ago, two-thirds of all casino revenues came from table games. And today, about two-thirds of all casino revenues come from slot machines. The casinos love them because they never call in sick and they don't have pension plans or health benefits. Um, so it's easy to understand why they'd like to fill the casino with more and more slot machines. A casino sports book is the place where you can bet on practically any sporting event in the world. You place your bet and are given a ticket. If you win, you cash the ticket after the event. But the frequently asked question is, I lost my ticket. Now what do I do? You can fill out a lost ticket form as long as you can provide some vital information. Basically, just give us as much information as possible. When you made the bet, where you made the bet, at what particular window. You then fill out a form, give it to the supervisor. We'll look it up in the computer to see if the ticket is, has not been cashed yet. We'll lock the ticket out to protect you from anybody coming up to cash your ticket if, they, if someone were to find it. And then, but you do have to wait 60 days to get paid. It's a gaming rule, but we'll send you a check, and it's pretty easy, actually. Ultimately, having a great time in a casino is all about attitude. It's about maximizing your playing time and getting that thrill that can only come from the chance of winning big. Which brings us to the most important gambling tip. Have fun. Next up, we'll answer all your questions about how to get casino comps and freebies. Most people think that hitting the mega jackpot or getting lucky at one of the table games are the only ways to win big in Las Vegas. But you'll be glad to know there are lots of other ways to come away from Glitter City a big winner at the casino's expense. One of the most frequently asked Vegas questions is, what's the best way to cut your losses? The answer, 
take advantage of all the free stuff Vegas has to offer. There's a lot of free shows. If you want to come to Vegas, pick the dates that you're going to be here and figure out all the entertainment schedules that are available for you. And there are a lot of free shows in the lounges and up and down the strip and inside the casinos as well. The Mirage Volcano started the trend. It's been erupting on schedule every 15 minutes from 7 p.m. to midnight since 1989. There's also the Fountain Show at the Bellagio and Masquerade in the Sky at the Rio, just to name a few. Downtown Las Vegas has gotten into the game, too, with a dazzling space-age video canopy called the Fremont Street Experience. Four blocks long with 12 million lights and 540,000 watts of concert-quality sound, this experience fires up every night at dusk. More free shows are appearing every year, so you can spend an entire evening of animatronic, pyrotechnic fun and not spend a single penny. The shows are just the beginning. Casinos give away free stuff all the time. They're called comps, which leads us to our next question. You often hear about giving comps. What does that mean? Do I get free stuff? Short for complimentary, we've all heard the stories of casinos that comp everything from limo rides to golf games to airfare. The sky really is the limit. But all of these perks don't come for nothing. The casino counts on their VIPs, also known as high rollers, to gamble. And just how much money do you have to gamble to qualify as a high roller? The answer, at least $10,000 over a weekend. You may also be able to get plenty of luxurious comps by risking less, but you won't get the ultimate VIP treatment. And if you've got even more than 10 grand to gamble, you could be labeled the coveted whale then you would be considered the elite of the elite. There's two types of whales. Uh, I have some locals that will lose a million dollars over the course of a year. And to me, that's still a whale because he's local. He's not getting much comps, but he comes in, maybe loses 50, 60, 70,000, 100,000 by the end of the year. Um, I tell a lot of hosts you, that you're, you're still a virgin until you beat a guy out of a million. I don't care if, it, if it's 20 trips in one year or if it's one night when he loses a million dollars. But you don't have to be a high roller to get the free stuff. The most basic comps can be found in the form of coupons. Everywhere you go, you should ask for a book. Flip through that book and look for what they call lucky bucks. For example, here's one at the Hilton. We've got a match play for $5. You put $5 down. If you win, you get 10. We've got a free pull on a million dollar slot machine. Flip the card again, and we've got uh, a free play on uh, Nevada numbers. Further back in the book, we actually have a $10 match play. So all together in this book, we've probably got about maybe $14, $15 in mathematical value. You just got to know enough to pick out the coupons and play them on the table. Jean Scott, the queen of comps, has become an expert at getting casino freebies and suggests you follow some basic rules in order to maximize your ability to cash in on a comp system. The one thing you need to remember is the casino can't give you a comp unless they know you're playing there. How do they know that? If you're a slot player, you use the slot club. Usually, this will get you started with a little free play. You never know what an extra spin will get you. You put that in the machine, it tracks your play. The more you play, the more comps you get. If you're a table player, you give your name to the pit boss and ask to be rated. And then they can issue comps from there. Hi, how you doing? Thank you, Brian. Best of luck to you. In addition to giving your name, casinos often issue players club cards. When you hand this to the pit boss, it makes it even easier for them to track your play. One last thing to remember, even if you get something for free, like spirits at the bar, you still should tip as though you paid for it. Bringing us to our last question on the subject, how much should you tip the bartender for a free drink? Vegas author and expert Barney Vincent can shed some light on this one. At a casino bar, unless you're a high roller, you pay for your drinks. How much is that? 425. 425 out of uh, 10? Uh, in a casino bar, the average tip is a dollar a round. Personally, I tip two dollars. Maybe my next drink will be a little stronger. Next up, we'll give you all the answers to your questions about the best food deals in town. Today, 
Las Vegas isn't only known as the entertainment capital of the world, but is often referred to as the culinary capital of the world. From Asian to Italian, French to all American, Vegas boasts the most celebrity chefs in America. It also runs the gamut from bargain buffets to high dollar cuisine. Today, people come here for the entire experience. The fact that you can, without leaving the confines of the United States, experience the finest restaurants of the world, that you can experience the highest level of entertainment. Want to know where to find one of the best classic Vegas all-American steak dinners? Gallagher's in New York, New York Hotel. Modeled after the original establishment on 52nd Street in New York City, the place recreates the ambiance that practically invented the genre of urban steakhouses. Well-chosen USDA Prime, dry-aged steaks, and excellent grilled seafood are available to patrons every day. And what if you're in the mood for Asian cuisine? Yakumi Japanese Restaurant, which translated means 100 tastes, offers many traditional selections. As a special treat, guests can enjoy the slice and dice showmanship of chefs cooking their meals on a tableside grill. The Venetian's Royal Star is an award-winning Chinese restaurant where chefs select fresh seafood from a live tank and have it cooked to perfection. A helpful hint, if you'd like to indulge yourself at one of these fine establishments, plan ahead. The restaurant scene in Las Vegas has changed so drastically in the last five, six years. Uh, great restaurants here now. We like to think that we're at the top of that uh, great list. Um, but definitely people know that they have to make reservations now in order to get into these establishments. I would say a week to 10 days prior to is sufficient. Now, fortunately for us, the reservation line is open 24 hours a day. There is somebody taking reservations 24 hours a day for all for, for us and for the other restaurants around as well. But what if you're looking for a restaurant the entire family can enjoy? The Excalibur's Tournament of Kings dinner show offers a festive, magical experience, complete with live entertainers in period costumes. In true medieval form, no utensils are used during the meal, which makes for a memorable, fun feast. If the family prefers a more casual style of dining, venture over to Treasure Island, where you'll find the Los Angeles landmark Cantor's Deli. And what about those late-night cravings? Not to worry. This round-the-clock party town will take care of those midnight munchies. And now for one of the most frequently asked questions on this subject. My question is, Vegas used to be a place where you could go for a really cheap steak dinner. Where can all the good bargains be found? Who better to answer this question than Wendy Tucker, author of 777 Cheap Eats in Las Vegas. She's agreed to take us on a quick tour to some of her favorite spots. The first stop, the Orleans 695 French Market Buffet. They've got barbecue, Chinese, Italian, Mongolian, and my personal favorite, the seafood. They have jambalaya, all-you-can-eat crawfish, and peel-and-eat shrimp, not to mention catfish and hush puppies. You've got a great salad bar here and fantastic desserts as well. Fantastic bargain, lots to eat, great variety. It's some place you've got to try here in Vegas. Are you looking for a place where you can get the most quantity for your dollars? You might want to check out the Westward Ho Deli. I have a three-quarter pound mega dog and a huge portion of strawberry shortcake, each for $1.49. Under three bucks, I've got this huge amount of food. It could feed probably four people, me for a couple of days. I'm going to go eat. I don't know where to start first, but I think I'll go for dessert. Westward Ho even has a margarita bar that offers 27-ounce drinks for the low, low price of 99 cents. They also have pina colada, strawberry, and blue Hawaiian-flavored margaritas for $1.99. That's right. Here's one for you, honey. Pina colada. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. And you never know who your server might be. Oh, baby. And of course, keeping with tradition, some of the best deals to be found are right downtown. What can I get for you today? I'd like a 99-cent shrimp cocktail and a 2.99-cent shrimp cocktail. That's a 2.99 and that's a 99. I'm here at the Golden Gate, Las Vegas' oldest hotel. I've got a 99-cent shrimp cocktail and a 2.99 shrimp cocktail. This is the home of the original Las Vegas shrimp cocktail and the best. 
A popular bargain spot with the locals is Bougainvillea Restaurant at Terrible's Hotel and Casino. Can you see this plate? It's huge. A whole chicken, corn on the cob, rice and beans and mango salsa for $9.99 every day, 24 hours a day. Now that we've answered your questions about where to eat, we thought it only fitting to mention where you should go for some great wine. For the true connoisseurs, the wine cellar at the Rio Suites Hotel and Casino is home to one of the most impressive public wine collections in the United States. The cellar showcases some 50,000 bottles valued at more than $10 million. The shelves are filled with highly collectible labels from around the world. If you'd like just a taste, have a seat at the wine bar. There are over 100 choices available by the glass. Speaking of which, lots of people want to know if it's legal to drink while strolling around the city. The answer might surprise you. You are allowed to walk down the strip with your favorite alcoholic beverage opened and drinking. That's fine to a point as, as long as you are do it in a safe manner. You don't throw your bottles like a projectile at other tourists or at motor vehicles. As long as you're just standing on the sidewalk, taking care of your own business and drinking in a safe environment, keeping yourself safe, not affecting others, then yes, you can drink an open container of alcohol here in Las Vegas. While drinking and walking down the street may be okay, you may not want to drink while walking down the aisle, especially in Vegas. When we come back, we'll tell you why two of the most popular words in Las Vegas are, I do. The Vegas casino scene is not the only game in town designed to entertain guests for hours on end. From nightclubs to showgirls, Elvis impersonators and weddings galore, there are many questions to be answered on Sin City's most iconic and popular entertainment venues. First up, the nightclub scene. It's no secret Vegas knows how to party, and the electrifying energy is felt almost everywhere you go. With so many places to choose from, one of the most common questions from visitors is what are the popular nightclubs? The upscale yet casual raw inside the Luxor is a big favorite among party goers. We have developed a three and a half million dollar light and sound package. We bring DJs in from all over the world. Of the top 25 DJs in the world, we have had 15 at raw. Something to keep in mind, it's best to pick a spot and stick with it to help your chances of getting in. You absolutely will waste your, your night. If you go from club to club to club, you've got to be prepared to waste half your night in line. Another helpful hint. Any club, whether it be Caramel here at Bellagio or Light at Bellagio, there are definitely lines on the weekends, so you want to get there early. Another frequently asked question by clubbers, how can you increase your chances of getting into the hot spots? Answer, be aware of the dress code. Don't show up in shorts, flip-flops, and a t-shirt and expect to make it past the velvet rope. Another tip for the guys. You know, it always helps to have ladies with you. You don't want to show up with a bunch of guys, so bachelor parties, you should definitely have girls with you as well. If the nightclub scene is not your thing, not to worry. There's bound to be something for everyone. Vegas is known for its spectacular theater shows, from the Blue Man Group, to Cirque du Soleil, and much, much more. So how do you increase your chances of getting into these hot shows? The way to get you the best seats for a show in Las Vegas is to book early. The way our system is designed is we've gone through and we've selected the best seat to the last seat, and we've programmed it into our computer system. So when you make your booking online, the computer looks at what's the best seat that's available right now, and you're gonna get it. So the earlier you book, the better the seat. The later you book, the less chance of having a good seat and maybe the chance of not being able to see the show at all. We came in from Philadelphia today at approximately 3 o'clock in the afternoon and checked into the hotel, and we had thought of some shows we wanted to go to, but um, we hadn't purchased tickets in advance, considering there's so many shows, there's got to be tickets available, and every show we tried to get into, get into was sold out, and now we're standing here in line and hoping to get into something. One of the most popular attractions of Sin City are the heart-stopping showgirls. 
These dancing divas are guaranteed to draw a crowd. They're beautiful, long-legged, and known for their feathery, flamboyant costumes and unusual headdresses. And yes, some girls even dance topless. This, shall we say, style of dancing actually debuted on the strip in 1957 at the Dunes with a show called Minsky's Follies. These show-stopping, eye-popping performances have been a part of casino entertainment ever since. And here's a fun question. How do I become a showgirl? If you'd like to try your hand, or leg, at becoming one of Vegas' signature performers, our expert can tell you what you need to do. Having the desire to want to do this job is probably 80% of the job because there are thousands, millions of people out there that are dancers, but wanting to do this job, you have to want to dance more than anything else. You have to want it more than another life. But desire isn't quite all you need. Weigh-ins for these girls is every week. You have to be within a weight range. That weight range is set according to your body type. If you're five foot eight, your body range uh, is, is regular or normal. You'll probably weigh between 120 to 125, 128, depending on your body type. Take this hand here and go, here I am, and then go into that. There you go. I want, I want you to say like, hey, when you come in. Remember, some of the shows in Vegas use a lot less costume than others. And of course, with our shows, with a show like Skin Tight, you can't just be a dancer, but you also have to be, you have to work topless. There lies a whole nother dilemma. What will my parents, what will my family think, you know? That has to become something that you deal with on your own and have to have the support of those people, or you have to be able to um, work it out so that they understand that this is part of your job. Not every job in Las Vegas is a topless job. You can become a showgirl and not work topless. It's a choice. Speaking of choices, the job options in Vegas are just as exciting as some of the shows. From bartending at the hot bars to performing magical mysteries, being able to wow an audience is the number one requirement. And running a close second is the ability to swivel your hips, bringing us to our next question. You know, I always wonder why there's so many Elvis impersonators in Vegas. Yeah, Elvis loved this city. I mean, outside of Memphis, Las Vegas was where he loved to spend his time because he was a night person and uh, he liked to be out late at night. And he just spent so much time here and he got married here. Uh, his big return where so many people saw him all over the world was in Las Vegas. People that come to Vegas, that's what they appreciate about Vegas. And there are just so many tourists that come to town uh, expecting to see an Elvis show. So whether they come to the museum to see it or one of the, the shows on the Strip, uh, high demand for Elvis, for sure. I definitely became an Elvis impersonator for the love. Don't get me wrong, I'm straight, I'm married. But the first time I saw him in person, I gasped. He was that good looking. I mean, he walked out on stage and I went, <gasps> His look was just so amazing. The pictures don't do justice. The videos don't, don't do justice. You had to see him in person to get the full impact. And since Vegas is home to the world's largest private collection of Elvis memorabilia and the largest collection outside of Graceland, it's obvious he left an unforgettable mark on his fans in this city. I think the legacy that Elvis left all of us uh, is the music. And I'll tell you that uh, Elvis didn't get involved in political messages. He didn't really get into uh, much of anything other than making people feel happy. And what better way to make people happy than making a personal appearance at their wedding? With over 200 chapels ready to turn you into a Mr. and Mrs. in the blink of an eye, celebrity guests are on call for spur of the moment or planned nuptials. No wonder there are over 400 Vegas weddings a day. Leading us to the next question, why is it that so many people get married in Vegas? First, it is one of the few places where you're not required to have a blood test and there's no waiting period. Second, wedding chapels can be rented for as low as $100 and the outrageous wedding themes are countless. 
You can go to the courthouse, it's open 24 hours a day, and that makes it very easy to get married in Vegas as well. Plus, it's a spontaneous kind of thing. Hey, let's go get married tonight, you know? People are crazy when they get here. But please remember, folks, these are official wedding chapels and not just for entertainment purposes only. Unless you want to spend nearly $800 for an annulment that could take up to two weeks to take effect, proceed with caution. The zany ceremonies may add a little more fun into the mix, but as for the marriage, it's the real deal. When we return, we'll dig into a little of Sin City's shady past. It might seem hard to believe, but Las Vegas wasn't always considered the entertainment capital of the world. Before we finish up, let's take a look at how it all began. Amazingly, Las Vegas, Nevada started out as a lonely little railroad stop in 1905. The railroad yards were located on a then partially paved Fremont Street. Today, the Plaza Hotel and Casino in downtown Las Vegas stands on the site of the original Union Pacific Railroad Depot. But it was the Hoover Dam project that actually put Vegas on the map. Well, Hoover Dam brought all kinds of prosperity to the state. Now, now let's go back to 1929 and, and the Depression years. It was extremely hard in Nevada with every other state in the country. So we've now got workers that are actually in southern Nevada. The arrival of those workers created a population explosion and Las Vegas has been exploding ever since. But to make way for the future, Las Vegas implodes its past. In the last decade, at least a half dozen hotels have come down to make room for newer and more spectacular ones. One of the hotels that has survived and thrived is the landmark Flamingo. Bringing us to our last question on the subject. So who started it all? That credit goes to Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. He's known by many as the man who turned Las Vegas into a gambling mecca. Siegel convinced some of his gangster buddies to pony up $1 million to help build his desert oasis dream. As the story goes, his inexperience in managing a project of this magnitude caused the cost to go up several million dollars, which didn't sit too well with the mobsters footing the bill. It's also rumored that his savvy girlfriend, Virginia Hill, was stealing money from her unsuspecting beau and hiding it in a European account. Although his good friend and fellow mobster, Meyer Lansky, was able to have his life spared on a couple of occasions, Siegel's inability to recoup the money in a timely manner ultimately led to his execution-style death. He was 42 years old. Now, in case you're still wondering... Does the mob still run Vegas? There's no mob in Las Vegas, and nobody knows it better than myself because I used to represent them. Well, there you have it. We hope you've enjoyed your VIP tour and that we've given you all the answers to your most frequently asked questions. You've gotten a first-hand look at this electrifying city from good food to great gambling tips to spectacular shows. So pack your bags and prepare to have the time of your life in America's favorite playground.